I'd like you to speak to you know, what you're doing in regards to generating um, the capacity of uh, electricity in, in Angola. Our company have five years. We, we, we just born in 2012, in the, end of, in the end of 2012, and we start smart power plants. But uh, since the beginning, we start trying to decrease the price per megawatt to be more efficient for our clients, in this case for the government. So iEnergy is, since the first day, trying to be the most efficient company in the, in the, in the country. And that was the first uh, um, goal that we achieved. And it's, e even today, we, uh, we are trying to do that. And uh, starting with that point, and have really straightforward that we really want to make uh, good projects and efficient projects in the country, we are growing every year. Today, we have a turnover of more than $700 million uh, after five years, because we are double every year what you're doing, and more than that, because we are trying to do the best things for the clients, even sometimes if not the best thing for the companies, but as soon as the client is happy, as soon as the, 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 all the, the continent is happy, we, we are growing. Uh, and this, in this case, we are double uh, um, the power plant that we are operating now for 750 megawatts. Of course, that's a major announcement that you are making here today. You are yes. doubling an existing power plant there in Angola. Exactly what impact is this expected to have, particularly to the households there, where we know that electrification is quite a challenge? Yeah, it, it's a big challenge. Today, that, that power plant was just starting uh, the first phase. The second phase is the first IPP with this, this size, is a huge 750 megawatts for IPP in Angola, it is the bigger one. Um, so it's a big challenge for everyone, for the financiers, for ourselves, for the government, for everyone. Is we are trying to do in all the projects we do the best example. And this is a huge impact of in everyone because we are using gas to generate power, so we, we reduce the cost of the power, so it's important for everyone. Uh, say the, the users, the consumers from the, go the, from the government, even for ourselves, because when you use gas, the OPEX or the operation costs will be reduced by half. So the impact is huge, because today we have a lot of hydro generation, a lot of diesel generation, and in this case with gas, we are putting a lot of gas power in, 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 the, in the grid that will be helping the, um, the consumers reducing the, pr the price of the, the energy. Sure. Interesting. I'd like you to speak more around the financing. You know, are, you exp are you financing this expansion? Yeah, yeah, how much oh. is it? <laughs> <laughs> we are trying to close the price with uh, our, our big partners, G&G. We are a company that since the first day we have the G support, General Electric, so thank you for G to, to believe in us. Um, and we are trying to negotiate the best price with G, but uh, uh, <laughs> so we need that support. But w the price will be around $1 billion investment because mm. it's 750 megawatts. Um, and we need the finances, the, the support for all the, all the financiers. DFIs are, are really important. Mm. Um, the banks, uh, even private equities, they want to help. But the, the model that we built since the first day, we have huge partners and strong partners. We need to, to lead by example. We need to make by example. That was the beginning with GE. And now on this project, we are negotiating with um, a, a huge partner. Uh, to, to come uh, and join with us to show to the international world, to the world, that it's possible to make projects with this dimension in Africa. That I mean, our you, you are spending big money. There's a $1 billion, you say, about estimated, if, if you get the price that you are. to get if you get, Yeah, we'll <laughs> see. We'll see with how your negotiation skills go. But you're spending really big money in an economy that is considered to be one of the laggards of the continent and an economy that is uh, still relatively new from this new political uh, dispensation that it has uh, come through. Why, though? Because that tells me that you're quite bullish on where Angola is going. So what are the green shoots that you are seeing that are sufficient enough for you to deploy so much capital right now? I think it's we, we're born in Angola. Angola is our homeland. Today we are in Ghana, and we won the concession of the, the utility company for 20 years. But Angola was our uh, birth. So, and we really believe on the country. And the new leadership of the country, they are doing the right things. And of course, it's not easy. It's many changes in, in so short time. But as soon as you make good things, as soon as you make a good project, as soon as you have a fantastic model to prove that what you want to do is achieve the best energy for everyone, the best price, the most efficient project, that is your security. Of course, it's not easy. It's not easy to invite and to bring the international banks but this is our work. We need to go fight, show that Africa is Africa. Africa is, is bigger than China. Uh, but, and we have 50, 
more than 50 countries. So we is a big challenge. And when the people talk about Africa, they think everyone is is the same. We cannot say that Europe is the same. Sure. Portugal to Russia to 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 Poland, it, it, it's a lot of countries. Africa is the same. So we need to start talking. Africa, of course, is a continent. It is a huge country. We cannot say because we have a problem in one country, we have the same problem in another country. And in Angola specifically, we really believe, and we are seeing that. We are the proof of that. We are a young company with entrepreneurs, with young people mm -hmm. trying to do the best. And we are here. Okay. Um, so it's one end of the value chain you're playing in. That's just the generation count. Are you looking at expanding into other, other, other parts of the value chain? And also, how is the regulatory environment in Angola? No, the regulations are, are, are the key, of course. We need to have a stable regulation. And this morning, all the presidents talk about that. And uh, above all that, high energy starts with generation. And it, it is really important for, for everyone to listen to this kind of message sometimes because it's easy when we are outside saying we need more green energy in Africa. But first, we need base load. First, we need to have stable energy for everyone in home and for the company, for the economy. So that was the first step of high energy. High energy starts investing in a base load energy, like diesel, like hydro, like uh, gas. Now, the second stage, that is the time to go to the second stage. We listened this morning, we became the biggest solar continent in the world. And now is the next stage we are going to that way. Renewable energy, solar is our focus at this moment. Solar and, and hydro is the big focus of our energy. But of course, we are realizing to finance all these kind of projects, we, ne we need to have a good receivables from the government. And the government needs to, have, needs to collect the money from the clients. And that is the issue today. We need to invest on the, gr on the grid and in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the, the meters to collect. The, the, the money from the consumers, but the consumers need to have stable power, so we need to have the base load, so this is a cycle. And today we are already investing a huge part of our resources in transmission and grid, uh, because that is the way to, to, follow, to go forward and to help the government make more projects. We need to be private investors, so we need to have the control of, of all, all the parts to make it happen uh, in the right way. For sure. Okay. Are we All right. Uh, but quickly, uh, uh, is there a conversation going on, you know, regarding getting cost-reflected tariffs? Because we know at the end of the day, that's where it all boils down to. The cost-reflected. Well, Co that yeah. is the. We cannot. We, we need to have sustainable, sustainable tariffs. If we don't have that, we don't have projects. We can have a five years project because we can have a, make a good deal with the government. We pushing the government to make a good tariff. We don't work like that. We work to have a, a fair tariff because if we don't have a fair tariff. We have problems in three years because as soon as we have a crisis, the government don't pay you. So, and the, the worst thing we can have for the investors and for ourselves that we are investor, we don't have. The, we prefer win less, but long term short. This is what we are doing. We are young. I'm young. I have time. I love Africa. Africa is my continent, and I, I hope to be here until uh, ever, even die here. So the point is, I want to have s fair tariffs. If we don't have fair tariffs, and that is sometimes the problem of few companies, they are too greedy and they want to, so we need to negotiate and need to be open book and to see, this is the cost of the trip. Let's try to see how we can reduce the price, how we can do that. If not, it, it's impossible to make this kind of private investment. All right, and thank you so much for your time, Ricardo. Thank It'll you very much. We'll see how, see how things unfold. We're speaking to Ricardo Machado. He's